Affinity Designer can import and export DWG and DXF CAD documents. I'll talk you through the import options first and show you some workflow ideas, then cover exporting at the end. I'll use a drag-drop approach to bring this DWG file in, and when I release the mouse button, I'll be presented with an import dialog. At the top, there is a selection drop-down where you can switch between all pages, a single page, or a model view. All pages will import all paper space layouts as separate artboards. If there are no paper space layouts, you won't see this option. Single page lets you import a single paper space layout. Again, if paper space layouts are not present, this option will not be available. This option also enables a secondary drop down, allowing you to choose which layout you wish to import. The model view will import the model from its boundless representation, honoring any margins and offsets if they've been specified. With this option, you can specify the measurement unit as well. DPI will specify the dots per inches value to bring the document in at. Whilst this typically defaults to 72 DPI for screen work, if you plan to texture your floor plans using bitmaps, this involves working with raster data. In this case, I would recommend changing this to 300 or higher to ensure the pixel resolution of the texture fills is sufficient for print quality. Background color lets you specify a background color for the paper or the background area of the layout. And color override will let you override the color of all strokes and fills. Remove hidden items will stop entities that are not visible, turned off, or frozen from even being imported into the resulting designer document. If this option is left unchecked, the entities will be imported but hidden in the layers panel by default. Display entity handles, when enabled, will append each entity's unique ID to its layer name. If this option is left disabled, it would be easier from a workflow stance to use functionality such as Select Same to quickly select multiple layers with the same name. Override line weights is available when importing to a model view, and this brings in all line weights at a point size of 0.1, which is useful for unifying all line work and helps with visual clutter. Another option available with model view is sanitize model. This is for edge case documents where there may be errant entities spread out across a huge distance because of the boundless model view. Enabling sanitize model will remove these entities. Try this option if your documents appear to be excessively zoomed out and you are finding them difficult to work with. I'll click OK to import this DWG file. All entities, such as lines, circles and hatches, are imported into Designer as layers. You can easily isolate or solo layers by holding Option on Mac, Alt on Windows, and clicking on a layer. Then to exit solo mode, you can either hold the modifier again and click on the same layer, or select any other layer in the layer stack. I may want to temporarily hide all the text layers, so texturing work can be performed easily. To do this, I can go to Select, Select Object, Art Text. This selects all the text layers, so I can simply hide one of them to hide them all simultaneously. I may also want to hide all the hatch and color fills. I'll select this hatch layer, then go to Select, Select Same, Name, and I'll hide all these layers as well. Finally, I may want to change this particular stroke color. I'll select one of the lines, then go to Select, Select Same, Stroke Color. On the color panel, I can now switch across to the stroke color and change it. Now I may want to export this document back out to DWG or DXF. To do this, I can go to File, Export, then choose DWG or DXF from the Format drop-down. The two presets available allow you to switch between explicit vector preservation and maintaining visual accuracy. For more granular control over export settings, you can look down here on the Advanced section. In addition to specifying the format version, you can also control how layers from Designer are converted back to entities. 
Bitmap fills, used for texturing in Designer for example, can be converted to solids or ignored entirely. Once the settings are configured to preference, I can click Export, then save the file to a chosen location. And there we go, that was a look at importing and exporting DWG and DXF documents, and a quick demonstration of some workflow ideas. I hope you found this video helpful, and thank you for watching.